folks, Sean Thornton here with Paraclete Consulting Group. Uh, call sign is Slick. I uh, just want to say hello. I wanted to put together a quick video uh, and send it out to the entire class, uh, which by the way, excellent job. We are already sold out for the urban carbine class. It is done, so it is completely booked. Um, so looking forward to that class uh, coming up here in June. Uh, some things that we can do to uh, prep before the class, uh, which will really help speed things up uh, during the block of instruction, uh, is that I need you to get all of your equipment squared away prior to arriving for the class. Um, all equipment. All right, so I'm going to go over a few things today, and then I want to talk about zeroing the carbine. If you will spend some time and get your weapon zeroed correctly, Prior to showing up, man, we can get on the line. Everybody's gonna get an opportunity to jump down. We will zero those carbines in the prone. Uh, we should go right down the line and, and confirm zero for everybody, and that will allow us to get right into the class. So uh, a couple of things I need you to do uh, as you prepare. Man, go over your weapons, please, in great detail, all right? I want you to check the uh, rail adapters, uh, the mount kits, man, get out your Allen wrenches, tighten those down, make sure they're really tight, and really secure for your optics. Same thing for my iron sights, which I hope you're running on your weapons, is that we have a rear fixed um, iron sight, or like in this case, uh, an add-on mag pull, and front sight, okay? And then if you're running the red dot, which I hope you are, man, get in here and lock these down, check them, make sure everything's nice and tight. If you're running a light, as you see right here, running this uh, TLR1 stream light, again, lock it down. Uh, if you're running a pressure pad, check everything. We don't want any equipment coming loose in the class. Uh, this is a good exercise that we should be performing monthly anyway, just to make sure that our gear is squared away. Uh, something that a lot of folks neglect is these slings, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna split hairs with you. Uh, shooter's choice, whatever you wanna run, uh, a single point sling or a two point sling, which we recommend, and I'll be showing you in the, in the class why. But I understand some of your uh, guns are built a little differently, and so at the moment, maybe you can only run the single point uh, fixed on the butt stock or the rear by the buffer tube, which is where it should be. So uh, we're going to go over that in the class. I'll show you pros and cons, and I'll show you why the two-point sling is so effective for uh, urban uh, operations, if you will, urban environment, uh, and especially if we get injured, okay? So that's critical. Uh, check all your gear. Make sure it's stowed away. Man, spend some time. Get out a good, proper cloth that came with your optics and clean those lenses. They get filthy. Uh, we get down behind the student's gun and we see that it is just covered in fingerprints and, and chewing tobacco and uh, dust and debris. Man, that needs to be out of there. It needs to be unobstructed and be nice and clear. Uh, butt stock. All right, man, I need to find where, what position I need to have this butt stock positioned in for my zero, for the way, uh, for where I zeroed that weapon. And then mark it. Get out a, a white Sharpie or a silver Sharpie and mark it. While you have that Sharpie out, be a real good opportunity to put little tick marks right here at the back of where my optic is. Man, if I need to pop that thing off for whatever reason, throw another one on there, put that one back on there, I just put it back where it goes and I should be zeroed. Jump down behind the weapon, confirm, and we should be good. Um, on these, if you're running your sling adapters, man, spend some time, check, uh, we'll take some tape, and uh, tape these down so they don't come loose during the class. You're gonna be shooting in a lot of unconventional, uncommon shooting positions. Uh, you need to make sure that gear is uh, locked down. It won't come apart. Slings don't come apart. If you're locking the, if you're running these uh, sling adapters, uh, the M locks or the QD types, man, check them out. Make sure that they're still good and solid. Ran a class a couple of weeks ago and we had two slings come off and fall on the concrete uh, while students were training. So spend a few minutes, lock this down, get it nice and tight, okay? All right, some uh, additional equipment I need you to show up with, okay? One, you need to have three AR mags. I don't care if they're P mags or knockoffs, as long as you have good quality mags uh, that will work in your weapon. Uh, and check these feed ramps and the lips on these magazines. 
make sure that they're nice and tight. There's no debris in there. The springs are still working. Uh, that way we don't have anything that slows you down during the class. You need a minimum of three of these. Don't care how many you bring to the class. You must have some ability to stow those magazines on your body. Okay, uh, here's a, uh, a very inexpensive but well-made quality product are these Blade Tech uh, magazine, AR magazine pouches. Just like in this configuration, it just goes on a regular belt, it goes right through my belt loops. Uh, and I now have two magazines on my body. Third one is in my hand, ready to load and make ready. Uh, you can run this setup or a chest rig. Now, if you don't wanna, if you wanna show up in all your battle rattle, that's fine. I'm fine, I'm good with that. As long as I have the ability to stow and wear uh, this chest rig on my body in such a configuration, and all day I can conduct my mag changes and access them where they need to be uh, throughout the course. So here you can see I've got a, a setup on a chest rig, uh, also inexpensive, and I've had this forever. Good piece of equipment, no, no failures with it whatsoever, but now I've got magazines on my body where they need to be. So when I'm shooting in the prone or supine or on the urban prone or fetal prone underneath the vehicle, which we will be doing, uh, I need to be able to get to these so I can get the gun back up. If you show up and you want to run a battle belt, that's great with a dump pouch. I uh, do recommend it. Comes in handy. Um, uh, we will not be doing uh, uh, any transition drills with to the pistol, but uh, if you're running your pistol setup, that's fine. As you see here, I'm running the G code setup. But what I do need is magazine pouches on your belt. So battle belt, standard belt, or chest rig. Don't care which one, but you must have a way to have your magazines on your body. I need each person, even if you wear prescription lenses like this, you must show up with quality eye protection that has side shield protection on it. Uh, we'll be shooting at the 35. We're gonna be shooting a ton of steel. Uh, if you've never done that, it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's, a, it's, it's really one of the best ways to train. However, fragmentation off that steel can occur. Uh, man, it's lightweight. Uh, it could come back on the body on a rare occasion. Uh, it'll bounce right off of you, but not on your eyes. Okay, so quality eye protection, this is a must. And if you want to overlay it over your lenses, that's fine, or your prescription lenses, that's fine. But you must have good eye protection at all times. Hearing protection. Man, spend the money, the few extra dollars, and get uh, some type of, uh, these are the MSAs. Not, not going to lie, they're not cheap. But, uh, man, you get on Amazon for $60 and get some type of sound-breaking technology that's amplified. So if you're at the end of the firing line, you can actually hear what's going on, but when you fire, that, uh, that, that uh, sound is broken, that sound barrier is broken uh, as it comes through your hearing protection. What uh, we don't necessarily recommend, it's fine if you have it, is these big hunting uh, uh, hearing protection uh, large uh, hunter type that uh, man your butt stop when you try to get that cheek weld on the carbine on the back of the carbine uh, that uh, it is hitting against this large ear pro and knocking off your ear pro uh, that'll be self-correcting and uh, can be a serious issue we want to make sure that nobody has any issues with their hearing protection uh, so uh, eyes and ears mandatory at all times i need you to show up with a ton of water uh, whatever water you think you may drink during that eight hour class, you need to triple it, okay? So bring a cooler, plenty of water, and electrolytes, not just water. No sodas, no sugar, none of that. You need electrolytes going into the body. We're gonna be uh, expending quite a bit of uh, bodily fluids for sure. And uh, if you need sunblock, bring it. Please bring a chair. Uh, if you want to bring some uh, pop-up um, tents for your area with you and your friends, that's fine too. We'll have some out there, but it can get a little congested. No green tip or armor piercing ammo. Okay, it must be regular ball, 55 grain, 65 full metal jacket training ammunition. Okay, it's cheap, get enough. 
Uh, for this class, man, we are not really a shooting range, shooting company, we're a training company. I'd rather analyze one good shot or one technique over 10 rounds, uh, and that is more productive than just coming out and running uh, 300, 300 to 500 rounds in a range. So uh, if you come out with uh, 300 rounds, you're gonna be good. You'll be squared away for that. Okay, zeroing the optic. Now, uh, student's choice, shooter's choice, whatever you wish to run, uh, whether it's a 100 yard zero, uh, 300 yard, doesn't matter, right? What we will recommend to you and we will demonstrate why uh, for what we do as civilians today is a 50 yard zero. Now we're gonna, for time, for consideration of time, we're gonna get that 50 yard zero at the 25. And I'm gonna show you a target here that you see. This tombstone is what we will be aiming at dead center, my POA, my point of aim is dead center of this tombstone, which you see right here. That is where I will aim while zeroing. The strike of my round should be 1.75 inches low approximately. The POA, point of aim, dead center of this black tombstone, POI, point of impact, strike of my round will be inside this red crosshair box. Man, if we're anywhere in that box, we are good. We will unload you. You'll step off the line. We'll move to the next student. We will all then go back to the 50 and confirm on our targets. Uh, and we should be on there with just a few minor corrections. After that, we're going to go back to the 200 yard line, confirm on steel. Uh, there is a tiny hold over. Uh, we will be about 0.7 inches high, still less than an inch, big deal, right? But uh, we want to just compensate for that and hold one inch low. And uh, so belly button, not belt buckle, belly button will be hitting uh, dead center, center mass on steel. And then from there, we're going to move up to the seven yard line because we need to talk about, uh, man, making that critical shot at the seven. Where do I aim? Depending upon my sights or my optics and where they sit above my center of bore line. Don't worry about that. We will dig deep into this during the class. We will go over it. Uh, just uh, to point out though, what I need to know is, here is my center of bore, center bore line where the round will exit the barrel. Notice that my optics are slightly higher about one and a half inches high, 1.65 inches high. So to make that critical shot, which you will do at the seven yard line, man, I obviously have a hold over or a shooter adjustment I need to make to compensate for the height of this dot over the tip of bore where the round will eject the barrel. So, uh, man, I've got to compensate that, aim slightly high. We will go over that with each shooter. You will know exactly where your holdover adjustment is at the seven yard line. Now, you may be wondering, man, what, why am I shooting my carbine at the seven yard line? If you have this weapon set up for home defense, it's likely that you're going to be making a shot 10 feet or less. And um, FBI statistics say now somewhere between 92 and 97% of all shootings occur uh, at 10 feet or less. So uh, there's a lot that we need to know there and uh, we will be going over that with you. Once we're done, uh, man, we're gonna check everyone's fundamentals, uh, weapons handling skills and reloads uh, because we must know how to get that weapon back into battery as quickly as possible when it's out of ammunition. Uh, during the class, we will begin to work in malfunctions. This is a level two carbine class. So we're gonna go over type one, failure to fire, type two, failure to eject stove pipe, uh, type three will be a double feed, and then a bolt override. Uh, running these guns, it's going to happen. Every one of those will happen to you. Generally, it's shooter-induced error. We'll show you how to fix that. Uh, how do we fix those in a gunfight? as most uh, uh, efficiently and expeditiously as we can. So we're gonna cover those quickly. Uh, and then the second half of the class is gonna be all unconventional shooting, moving, which I would do in an urban gunfight or active shooter. Uh, we're gonna shoot in 
areas around terrain, tabletops, corners, walls, things that you would see inside your residence or an active shooter inside most dangerous place in the world, Walmart. Um, and uh, that way you know how to maximize cover, minimize exposure, while still getting good side of line of sight picture on the target or on the threat. Uh, and so we'll go over that. Uh, I will, I'm not gonna kid you. This class is gonna kick your butt. Uh, it is a level two carbine class. Level two for us is, man, we are hustling, we are moving, movement drills, moving from barrel to barrel. Uh, you should be sucking wind. We wanna try to train as much in the red zone as we possibly can. That way when we find ourselves there, it won't be the first time, okay? Um, anything that you are not able to do, a pre-existing injury, doesn't matter. Uh, we won't do it. We will modify it for you. And every drill will be conducted as fast as you can safely and efficiently conduct it. That's it, all right? So uh, we always find that uh, the shooting industry actually holds students back. Uh, you see a lot of guys out there running level three carbine class, and uh, man, they haven't even got into reloads and malfunctions yet. Man, that's a basic carbine class. So uh, we're gonna refresh there quickly. We have a lot of material to put out. Uh, we are a teaching company. Uh, we're not here to just shoot. We're gonna train analyze, perform, demonstrate, and execute every single drill. Uh, you are gonna be shooting on the ground a lot in the kneeling position. Uh, instructors will be there to assist you through that. If you need elbow pads or knee pads, I highly recommend you bring them. Uh, knee pads would be great, especially for your right knee or strong knee, whatever that is, if you're right-handed or left-handed. So um, let's get some good communication started over the next several weeks. Uh, let's reply to this email. Uh, that I'm going to send out with this link to the YouTube page. And uh, any questions you have about equipment, this is the time to ask now. Any questions you have about the class, this is the time. Uh, that way when we show up, man, we're ready to train. All right, guys, thank you, man. I look forward to training with every one of you. Uh, if you have not done so yet, please go to our Facebook page, hit like and follow. Uh, that way you can stay tuned with us. Uh, when you go to the YouTube page, please hit subscribe to it. That way you can see uh, videos that come up. Uh, you'll see some of our other classes that we put out. That will be a good place to go to show you what we're going to be doing, uh, the level of training and the level of uh, outcome and performance that we expect. And uh, same thing with Instagram. Um, please go to Instagram, hit like, follow, share it with your uh, friends and family. Let's get the message out there, man. Let's train and let's be hard to kill. Here is the BZO tombstone that we will be using at the 25-yard line to get a 50-yard zero. As you'll see, there's the POA and the POI. We'll go back to the 50. We will confirm, and we ought to be able to separate the line between the white and the black.